Why PBS reported on December 22nd of 2019 that in May of 2018, a woman named Andrea and her son, Jose, arrived in the U.S. at Rio Grande City Port in Texas after a long and treacherous two-week journey from her home. She arrived in hopes of seeking asylum because she was fearful for her and her child's life due to the MS-13 gangs in her home. Shortly after arriving, her and her son were sent to two separate processing stations. After six weeks, she was reunited with Jose, who at first would not even speak or interact with her. It took Jose a whole year to begin regaining his trust to his mother. Luckily, Andrea was granted access to reside and work in the U.S., whilst waiting for her hearing on her asylum claim in the fall of 2021, and is currently staying with family in New Jersey. But, however, from, <clears throat> from this event, Andrea was diagnosed with PTSD. Andrea's lawyers claim that she has a good chance of being granted asylum, but not everybody is as fortunate as she may be. According to TRAC Immigration, in 2019, 65% of those seeking asylum were denied and returned to their previous homes. The proposition of the DREAM Act, on August 1st of 2001, is an example of how immigrant children who have lived in the U.S. their whole lives can have a chance of becoming U.S. citizens. However, situations like Andrea's and Jose's can only be avoided and combated in one way, and that one way is by voting. From the events that occurred in, to Andrea and Jose, it should be clear that America needs to listen to the voices of the American people who are demanding change. Today, I will be elaborating three reasons why our voice matters and why we need to vote. To begin, we will be looking at the history behind our voting privilege and recognize the great effort countless others have gone through to give us this right. Following this, we will talk about how demanding for acts such as the DREAM Act is absolutely crucial in allowing the undermined immigrants of America to have a chance at citizenship, as well as how our votes can mend the damages of familial separation inflicted on these families. Finally, we will address the historical trend of low turnouts during election seasons and why each and every one of our votes means so much more than we could have ever anticipated. Firstly, recall that once upon a time, restricting the vote of minority groups was much more commonplace, going against everything that the land of the free stands for. The times of voting restrictions on to Amer minority Americans have been brewing for generations, and this unjust time has only begun seeing positive change, only recently. Wayne State professor and author of The Big Vote, Gender, Consumer Culture, and Politics of Exclusion, discussed that certain groups of minorities had to fight and demand change for their right to vote, risking their lives on every occasion. Some examples of change that came as a result of the groups of people demanding this change include the 19th Amendment, which gave white women the right to vote. The Voters' Rights Act of 1965, which granted right of all Ma Af <clears throat> African Americans to vote under the 14th Amendment. And the Obama administration's uh, 14th Amendment legalized same-sex marriage in 2015, barely. These are just a few examples of minority groups getting the change they demanded. As we can see from the facts, America has been fighting for a long time to extend the promise of freedom to all of its people but we still have a long way to go until the playing field is truly equal. By voting intelligently, we can combat animosity towards minority groups and stand beside our fellow Americans. Let us recall back to Andrea and Jose's story and how through the fight to right, how for the fight to the right to citizenship for American immigrants creates hope for these undermined Americans. A hope that was so close to realization through our dem democratic process. By means of democracy, we are able to speak on the struggles of minority and migrant Americans. Voting is imperative if we are to account for all of these under, uh, unaccounted for Americans. According to a study on the rates of represented to non-represented asylum cases in the U.S., <clears throat> rates for non-represented asylum seeking cases rose dramatically beginning uh, from 10% in early 2016 to more than 45% in 
in late 2019. 10% was the peak statistic going as far back as 2010. This means that parties whose agendas do not account for less educated demographics, such as the party whose agenda was enacted in 2016, going back to the data, typically work in favor of those who do not suffer from the conditions of poorer demographics, who need votes to improve their living conditions, not their bank accounts. It is more difficult for these demographics to be informed, including the dreamers, due to significantly more work hours, having to dedicate all their focus and energy to providing for their families. They are a huge group that are just not being fairly accounted for. Now that we have discussed how your voice and your vote can help improve the lives of those who are not accounted for, let's discuss how low voter turnouts ha can have a major effect on the nation and not in a good way. Low voter turnout has historically been a common thing in the US, but that needs to change. In such precedented change, we need to make our voices heard. You might think that your single vote may not matter, but let me tell you that it makes all the difference. In January 31st of 2016, Truman Media Network reported that voter turnouts have been steadily declining since the 1940s and 50s, which is not a good thing because elections are where decisions are made in modern democracies. <clears throat> and if a lack of voter turnout continues, the votes will only represent a small fraction of our nation rather than us as a whole. A good example of why each vote counts can be seen in the 2000 presidential election between George W. Bush and Al Gore. This election is the closest that we have ever seen, with both candidates having just over 48% of the electoral votes. This left Florida to decide the winner, and the popular vote went to George W. Bush by just 437 votes, thus Florida deciding George W. Bush is the winner. This provides a perfect example of how one single vote can make all the difference and tip the scale in the provided direction, not only for your county, but for your whole country. After hearing these reasons, I hope that it has made, been made evident that America is relying on each and every one of us to speak our minds and vote in a manner that includes everybody. We learned first that America's undermining of minority demographics, followed by an explanation on how our votes can help improve the lives of those who weren't given the same benefits as some other of us. Finally, we reviewed how we reviewed why voter turnouts are bad and should be avoided, because we are built on a democracy. As we make our way into this crazy, changing world, let us not be rattled by leaders who encourage discourse and lead us into disarray. Let us stand together as a nation who not only preaches freedom, but acts by it, and truly believes in justice for all of us. And remember, with our votes, with your vote and my own, not only can we help change the lives of Andrea and Jose, but you can change the lives of thousands of people. Now go out there and get your voice heard.